Hi, my name is Corey Alston and I'm a Solutions Architect with Google Cloud Platform. We're here at Google Kirkland today to talk about machine learning using financial time series data with TensorFlow and Google Cloud Platform. We put this solution together for three reasons. The first reason is Google's machine learning expertise. Google's a leader in this area and puts machine learning at the center of many of its services. The second reason is Google Cloud Platform. Google Cloud Platform is high performance, cost effective, compute, storage and services on demand. Machine learning, especially training sophisticated deep learning models, can take a significant amount of compute and storage. The third reason, or set of reasons, are the use cases that we're seeing in financial services. Financial services has a focus on analysis and has time series data at the core of what it does. Volumes of data are rising rapidly and client expectations in terms of having intuitive, always available answers to questions have never been higher. So financial services has a need that is really well catered to by TensorFlow running on top of Google Cloud Platform. This combination can be a real force multiplier for your business. Now let's walk through the solution itself. We'll include a link with the video to allow you to download the notebook and get things set up. At a high level, we're going to see if by following the sun we can predict the performance of stock markets that close later in the day based on what happened in markets that close earlier in the day. It's a simple idea, but it's interesting, non-trivial, and will let you start exploring the capabilities of Google Cloud Platform and TensorFlow for financial analysis. Now, in the longer version of this video, we spend time on sourcing the data and exploratory data analysis for that data. In the interest of brevity, for this version of the video, we're going to skip forward to the point where we have the data in a form where we can apply machine learning models to it. We're now in a position to articulate the model that we're going to build to predict what happens with the S&P 500. We're going to predict whether the S&P 500 close today will be higher or lower than yesterday. So let's dive into the meat of our modeling. We're going to build two classifiers using TensorFlow running on top of Google Cloud Platform. We'll build a very simple one, the simplest one we can think of, which is always a good starting point. And then we're going to build a much more sophisticated one. And here you can see our first simple model. Let's dwell on this model just for a little bit and look a tiny bit deeper at what TensorFlow is doing. First of all, two fundamental concepts. The first is a graph. TensorFlow lets us define a graph of interacting operations, such as matrix addition and multiplication, that describe our machine learning algorithm. The second is a session, which encapsulates the environment which executes our graph and the operations that constitute our graph. Now let's define our graph. We're going to need two things. We'll need variables and we'll need operations on the variables. Here, we define our input and output data as placeholders. Now that simply means those are variables without specific values assigned. We'll add those later when we train and run our model. We also define the weights and biases for our model as variables at this point. Now we're ready to define our model. We define our model in a single line of code. We take the matrix multiplication of our feature data and our weights we add our biases, and then we do a softmax. And then we take the softmax regression, which assigns a probability to each of these possible outputs. The output with the greatest probability is the one that we choose. So how do we train this model? It's all about cost. We define a cost function here. We're going to use the cross entropy. Training is then a process of iteratively changing our weights and biases such that the cost is minimized. And there, in a few lines of code, we've built our first TensorFlow model. Now let's go ahead and train our model. An accuracy of 65% on our training data is OK, certainly better than random. Now let's look at some metrics which will show how well our model performed on our test data. We have an accuracy of 60% and an F1 score of 0.357. The F1 score is a rounded measure of how well an algorithm performs. Accuracy of 60% is OK, and an F1 score of 0.357 is OK. 
is sort of what you'd expect from a simple model. Now, let's see if we can do better with our more sophisticated model. Next, we're going to build a feed-forward neural net with two hidden layers in TensorFlow. One of our hidden layers is going to have 50 nodes, and the second hidden layer is going to have 25 nodes. Here you can see the model. It's really not very much longer than our original model, which is a testament to the power of TensorFlow. It's possible to do very sophisticated modeling in TensorFlow in relatively few lines of code. Let's again train our data. With this model, we see an accuracy of around 77% on our training data. Now let's take a look at the performance of our neural net. We see an accuracy of 72.2% and an F1 score of 0.692%. These are both very good, especially in the context of the data that we're using. The best models on top of these data sets come in around the low 70s of percents. So in summary, we came a long way in a relatively small amount of time. We sourced our data, we transformed our data, and we built two TensorFlow models. We built a simple one that performed reasonably well. We built a more sophisticated one that performed very well. And overall, what we've seen is that TensorFlow and Google Cloud Platform today have really multiplied our efforts. So go ahead and give it a go. Run through the solution at your leisure and then tweak the solution. It's all in the notebook. Thank you very much for watching. You can find out more at cloud.google.com.